Hello there everybody, uh, Dan Calloway again, and uh, thank you for watching. I'm coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Back out on my uh, salient OS uh, distro today, and I want to do a follow-up video to one that I did uh, yesterday on database management in Linux. Uh, so let's get started. First thing I need to do is open up a terminal, and I need to uh, issue the alias which lets me into my champ um, application. So let me go put then XAMPP, put in my password for Data Pioneer. That should open up the interface here. And let me go ahead and click on this Manage Servers. I see my Apache web server is stopped, so let me go ahead and start it. And while that's starting, let me go ahead and start the MySQL database. We'll need that running as well. So both are starting right now. Um, the Apache web server is running and the MySQL database server is running. So we're good to go. Let me go ahead and minimize both of these. And uh, next thing I need to do here is I need to get into uh, phpMyAdmin. So let me go over to Firefox now that I've got the Apache web server running. And uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and just issue the uh, local host rather than going to that server tab that I did before that I showed you the other day. Um, and so I'm just going to type in, actually just all I need to do is type in localhost. And it takes me out to my Champ Apache MariaDB PHP Perl uh, interface here on the dashboard. And let me go out to PHP my admin and click on that. Okay. Um, one of the things that I did from yesterday, you notice when I logged in yesterday, or you may not have noticed, but I think I pointed it out. But uh, the user here was root at localhost, and I wanted to create a user called Data Pioneer. Um, so I went into the user accounts, all right, and I clicked on that. In PHP my admin and I created that data pioneer under two different host names one a percent for any host and then localhost which is what we're using and I gave the uh, data pioneer uh, full privileges if I go to local host here and edit privileges let me come down um, you'll see that I gave myself full administrative privileges here all right so However, when I restarted the server and came back into PHP my admin, um, the uh, interface was still not showing that root, you know, in the home. Let me go back to home here. Still not showing that um, uh, data pioneer at localhost. It was still showing the root at localhost. Figured out how to fix that, and how to fix it is this. Uh, let me go out to a third workspace here and let me get into the terminal one more time. What you have to do here, let me bring this up to full screen. I'll close this terminal when I'm done with it. Um, let me log in as root and clear the screen. If you go out to um, change directory to OPT, where this is installed and change directory to LAMP and then change directory again to Apache 2. Um, I mean I'm sorry not Apache 2 CD back back dot dot um, PHP my admin CD to PHP my admin there is a file here that I discovered called config dot inc.php all right so what I'm going to do you have to modify that file to get your user to be the default all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cade into um, config inc.php and come down to this area for authentication type all right 
And right here is what you need to do. You need to change on the configuration for servers the user to Data Pioneer or whatever your username is. And then here's the password. And I don't care if you see the password because you're not going to be able to get into my system anyway. Um, but the password I have set embedded is the password that I use on that account in this application. Uh, I think I could leave that blank and then I would be prompted for the password. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure. The reason I needed to change this, though, it will be evident when I get into dBeaver because dBeaver, when it makes its connection to the MySQL um, database remotely, it uses the MySQL driver and it needs to have a username and password and root didn't work. Root without a password did not work. So I'm, I'm thinking that Data Pioneer without a password would not work here either. So I had to give it a default username and default password. Then I had to set up Data Pioneer in the database in order to make that happen. And it works now. So let me go ahead and let me get out of this. And uh, let me go ahead and clear the screen and exit out of this interface. All right. And let's go back to where we were. And you'll notice now that I am uh, the user data pioneer at localhost. And it, it did allow me to get in because uh, the password is provided that was set up under the user accounts section. I wanted to clarify that, just tell you that you can do that um, so that when, you, when you're getting in here and setting it up for yourself, it took me a while to figure out how to do that, and so I was able to get that done. Glad I did. All right, so I've been doing some work since yesterday. Uh, I told you that yesterday's video was basically a generic video that just showed you how to set up a default database with a default table, single table, with um, pretty much uh, generic uh, column names and that kind of thing. Well, since yesterday, I've actually developed a uh, full-fledged database with several tables. The only thing I haven't done that I'll show you is I haven't related those tables yet. I mean, I know what the relation is going to be. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet in PHP My Admin uh, or dBaver as well. So let me go ahead and, and this is the database. It's called Employees. I'll go ahead and expand it. And you can see I've got several departments here. I've got, uh, I mean, uh, several uh, tables here. I've got one called Departments. And let me go ahead and click on that and bring that tab up. All right, and so I've got this department uh, table. We've got department number and department name. All right, and I'll get out to dBeaver to show you the relationship. Uh, here we've got a department employee table. All right, got a department manager table. So these are managers of the departments. I've got a full employee table, and there are 10 employees in this uh, particular company. I've got the salaries for each of those employees, okay, and the hired the from and to dates, and then the uh, titles uh, for each employee as well, okay. So here are all the employees, and here are all their titles. Um, so this is in PHP My Admin. This is where I created the the uh, the database and where I created the tables and set up the uh, the Table, you know, the field types, etc. Okay, then I used dBeaver actually to create the the data for the table. So let's go out to dBeaver. Um, let's get into another workspace and so let me go out to dBeaver here. Let me fire up dBeaver. This is the Community Edition 5.3.2, I believe. And it's loading now. And this is in Arch Linux. Got it installed in Arch. If you watched yesterday's video, this is part two. I will relabel the first video part one and this one part two. Okay, so we are connected to that remote database because I did make the connection earlier. Here's the connection. It's the MySQL employee um, database. Let me da uh, down arrow and go down to the database itself. And so the database is employee and it's highlighted. That's the one thing I like about dBaver is whatever dBase your, uh, your database is that you're working with in your particular project, it, it does highlight it so you know which one you're working with. 
um, and come down and I expand that and let me expand the tables and here are all the tables okay so I have a departments table and it comes up here on this tab I've got a department employee table a department manager table an employees table a salaries table a titles table and then the employee database itself all right so if I click on the departments tab you can see that we have in this company we've got five departments and they're numbered one through five uh, this is a um, if you look at the properties here uh, it is department number is a character with four uh, four characters okay as a size of four department name is a varchar which is a variable character uh, with a uh, variable size up to 40. The primary key here is the department number on this particular table. Okay, So if we go back to the data, you can see that the department names are production, marketing, human resources, admin, and shipping. All right? And then let's look at the ER diagram. And this is the ER diagram for this particular table. There are two primary fields there's a department number field and it is the key okay and then the department name all right so let's move along to the department employee table now the department employee table has the employee number okay so there are 10 employees 1 through 10 uh, there it has in its second column the department numbers 1 through 5 okay so they're all accounted for here all right, so you've got a many-to-one relationship there between the employees and the department number. And then we've got a from date and a to date, okay, for that particular employee. Now, the to date is going to be uh, the 1st of March, and I just left it that way. Not sure how I'm going to work with that um, to make it come up to the current date. I'll have to figure that out, but I left it at 0301 of 2019. And this is the way dates are presented in sequential query language, all right. Um, let's look at the properties here again and you can see that the employee number is an integer with the size of 10 it is the primary all right the uh, department number is a character uh, with a size of 4 the uh, from date and to date are all date types data types okay and you don't specify size on the data data type date type and let's look now at the ER diagram. So this is the ER diagram. The employee number is the primary key, so it's bolded in black here. Let's move along to the department table. And in the department table here, we've got a department number, 1 through 5. And we have an employee number here. Okay. Um, I still have work to do here. I don't have this complete yet. We should have uh, a total of 10 employees. So I'll need to work on that. Uh, and then we've got a from date and a to date. I thought I had it completed, but I do not have it completed. I've still got information I need to provide here. So uh, sorry about that. Anyway, um, and then by the way, when I add here, because I do have employee 1, 2, 6, 7, and 9, Oh, I'm sorry, these are the department managers. Uh, I'm sorry, this is complete. Uh, I'll take that back. There are only um, one manager per department. So you've got five departments, and you've got one manager in each department. And the employee number that's the manager is this number here. So employee number one is the manager of department four. Employee number two is the manager of department one, etc. Okay, so it is complete. Uh, and then the from date and to date of employee. Let's uh, look at the properties on, I think we already looked at that, and the ER diagram, I think we also looked at that, okay? So let's go back to the data. So let's look at employees table. So we have 10 employees, so employee numbers 1 through 10. They don't have to be in this order. You know, you can sort them out differently if you want. Uh, and if you're doing queries, you know, you'll uh, obviously that'll change. Birth dates, here are the birth dates on these employees. Here are the first and last names. So, for instance, employee number two was born in uh, September 7th, 1965. His name is Brian Meadows. He is male. 
under the gender column, and then his hire date was uh, 2003, February 1st, okay? Under the gender, let me take you, take you in there, let you take a look at that. Under the properties there for gender, to show you how I handle that, uh, for gender I took, and what I did was I set an enumerator, all right, and then I used, uh, let me get off of it so you can see it better. Um, enumerator was the type, and then M and F, male and female, so it's male and female only. And so what happens is, is you get a pull-down menu whenever you're in that uh, uh, field adding another employee, and you can select either a male, and if the select the down arrow, you just hit the down arrow on your keyboard, and it'll let you select F for female. Hit the enter key, and it, and it accepts the value, okay? All right, so here's the data again, and then uh, the ER diagram again for employees. The employee number is the primary key. All right. For salaries, I've got 10 employees and I've got the salaries loaded for each of those. And they're based on their positions, obviously. So employee, employee number one makes the most salary. Employee number one is the president. Uh, here's the from date and to date. All right. Um, the ER diagram for that is the employee number is the primary key. And for properties, they've got uh, employee number is an integer, size 10. Salary is an integer, size 11. And then two date fields. All right. All right, and then uh, the ER diagram we looked at already. Titles, the last table we want to look at here. We've got 10 employees. And each of those employees has a title, okay, based on their position. Uh, for instance, employee number one is the president, as I told you, so with the most salary. And employee number two is, let me expand this uh, column here, is the production manager, so he's the manager or she. Um, these two employees, three and four, are assistants, so they're not managers. Uh, employee number five is a marketing assistant, so it Employee number five is not a manager. Um, number six is a shipping director, so he's a manager. Number seven is a marketing director, so he or she is a manager. Number Employee number eight is a marketing assistant, so no, no manager. Employee number nine is the HR director, so that would be a manager. And then production assistant, employee number 10, no manager there, okay? And then from and to dates as well. Uh, properties on these fields... Our employee number is an integer, um, title is a variable character, and then two date fields. And then the ER diagram for this particular table, employee number again is the primary key. All right, so let's take a look at the entire database employee. And that what that does is that brings up all the tables. All right, now all these tables have not been related yet, uh, but I will tell you that. Um, the way those are going to be related pretty much is this is going to come down here. Uh, employees, the department manager is going to be coming down here. You're going to have the employees will come up to about right here in the, the schema. Uh, and then titles will fall underneath here. And salaries will be above that and they'll be related. Now, it's going to look something like that. There's going to be, this is going to be a one-to-many relationship between the departments and the department employees, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the way that's going to look, uh, let me go to another tab and let me see if I can go out and pull up the uh, picture that I have that shows the schema. Um, it should be department uh, table, uh, if I can find it. Here it is. Employee database. There we go. Actually, I could do that one, or I could do this one here. Is the one that I have that I created from. No, can't do that one. It's messed up. Let's go back. Close. Let me grab this one. And then let me see if I can bump this up a little bit so you can take a look at it. All right, there we go. So we're going to have salaries, titles, employees, department manager, departments, 
and department employees, and they're going to be related in in this fashion. Okay, um, so there are is going to be relationships that take place here. For instance, between employees and salaries, there's going to be a one-to-many relationship. Between employees and titles, there's going to be a one-to-many relationship here, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because you can have two people, you know, you can have more than one person being a marketing assistant, uh, and that corresponding to you know one employee. All right, so let me go ahead and close this and close that. And let's see, let's go back to here. This is in dBeaver, okay. Um, let me show you that the way that you can add fields, I'm going to add a field, but I'm not going to save it. For instance, if I wanted to add another um, department onto this particular company, let's get into the data. Right now I've got production, marketing, human resources, admin, and shipping. Let's say I wanted to add a uh, sixth department, department number six, and I wanted to make that department say um, research. Okay, what I do is right click, go down into this field, and right click. Let me go here. Click down in. Let me go here, and right click, and say edit, and add row. Okay, so it adds a row here. And so I would put in number six, then I would tab over and I would put research, okay? And it would, you know, I didn't, didn't quite make it. Let's try that again, research. Okay, and then hit enter to save it. Okay, so you would have a sixth um, department number here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I don't wanna have it mess up the database. So I'm going to go ahead and do a um, right click and edit and delete current row. Alright, so that's how you do it in a dBaver. Alright, and so this is uh, showing you that you know you can get wild with this. You can get in here and you can add a lot of, uh, a lot of tables to a particular database. You can have more than one table uh, obviously, per database, you can have more than one database that you're working with in dBaver at any one time. So uh, this is part two of uh, yesterday's video, and hope it was helpful. Um, please subscribe and comment on my video, and have a nice day.